What's up guys, Ben here, bringing you another video today. Apology for no upload yesterday. Uh, I lost my voice at some point after Major 2. But I have it back now. I got a nice little coffee in hand. And I want to dive in on some roster mania stuff that happened uh, yesterday. Obviously, in my last video, you know, we talked a little bit about some of the momentum around uh, Boston, as well as uh, potentially sort of in Florida land. And it's been kind of some updates in those areas. Both those teams are sort of trialing players and they don't necessarily have sort of a sense of where they want to go. I do though want to spend a majority, if not all this video talking about Optic, Ender slash Illy getting dropped, what that means for the team. And then kind of like my thoughts, because I feel like Optic sort of at a crossroads as a team. And I want to kind of explain to you guys what my thinking. So let's dive in. All right. So amongst all the sort of, again, the Boston kind of stuff was Beans going to come in or not. And also as well, um, the stuff around Florida and them trialing Dak and Dan Gosey. And then uh, I've heard Capsule will be also uh, being trialed with them today. Late last night, I'm at 10 p.m. Late, you know, for me, that's late because I'm old and I go to bed at like midnight. Illy tweet out, restricted FA, bang my line if you want to win. And I think for me, this kind of comes as a surprise. You know, they didn't play that bad in the major two cycle. Uh, they got top four at that tournament. And honestly, I don't necessarily think Illy was kind of the issue of why they lost that thief series really in an essence came down to a couple of plays and i would say the worst defenders of the bad plays were jotzy pushing out maps um in that fortress control and uh who kind of rotating at 50 seconds uh to p3 on embassy on the last rotation i think both those plays are pretty egregious i know like you could argue well on that first play illy probably should have hopped on p1 heady or in the truck and kind of traded the stupid play that ant made but Whatever. My point is, I was surprised um, by this move to an extent because for me, Illy's never been that crazy 1.1 consistent slayer. He's a really good in-game leader. He's a great sniper. He's very much like an emotional center of the team like we talk about with, say, like a Ben Bands type deal. And so them moving on from him is uh, going to leave a big void that they need to fill in their squad. I want to circle back to sort of Florida and Boston uh, a bit where we're kind of at right now in roster mania with some of these teams and why we haven't heard confirmed squads is basically what I've heard from around the amateur scene because to be honest the AM scene is pretty leaky compared to the pro scene is that there's about one or two players that are linked to all three of these rosters and that their decision on where they want to go is what's kind of holding stuff up and I've the names that I've heard are basically centered around um you know the decimate gaming team uh, that ended up actually winning uh, the Challengers Tournament. And in specific, Dan Ghost is a name that comes up a lot. Now, I haven't confirmed 100% like what team Dan's going to, but his name is just everywhere in all of these conversations. You can't really ignore it at this point. I'm a little surprised that Boston's kind of in the mix for potentially some of these players uh, on Decimate. You would think that with Zinni coming out, uh, AK Methods, that they're just going to bring in Beans, but maybe there's something there. I don't know. So that's where we're getting to this sort of Dan Ghosty optic thing. I think that's how everybody on Reddit and on social media is sort of circled around that specific thing. As well as I think these tweets from Crone, right? So someone tweeted at Crone last night. Well, Optic fans be happy after this is all done. Just give me something little. Crone said, no, LOL. And then he replied afterwards to give a little more context. And no, it's not bad if it happens, but I know what Optic fans are like. I've studied them for five years. Even before we really get to the Optic Texas thing, let's talk about where the league is at right now. This as it stands on your screen right now is uh, the CDL standings as it stands through, uh, not two stands twice, uh, through two majors. Obviously, FaZe having won the last event, they're sitting at 155, they're good for champs. And your top four is basically FaZe, New York, Toronto, and LA Thieves. New York and Toronto didn't play all that good at uh, major two, at least to their standards, and Thieves went on their big run, made it to uh, the grand finals. And that's why they've jumped up a lot in points. And you see there's a big drop off after Minnesota. Optics worked their way into the top eight. And then I think it's pretty clear at this point what like the top seven teams are gonna be. And it's pretty much everybody else fighting for that last spot, at least at the moment. I think looking at this list and sort of where I think this season's probably gonna go if I make a prediction, is it's really gonna be FaZe and Thieves and then kind to everybody else. I think there's a lot to like about New York, a lot to like about Toronto. Minnesota as well as Optic, and we'll get to them in a second. And you could see like Seattle make a run or Boston, but they've got some bigger issues they got to work on. If we want to even step out further, right? FaZe and Thieves have been the most consistent teams the last 18 to 24 months. You know, Thieves had a rocky start to last season, but then really kicked it on around Pro-Am. FaZe didn't win last year, but they got second and third at like legitimately every event last year and have been the most consistent team in the CDL since it started. And I would say Optic hasn't, and that's sort of, 
maybe a little bit of what they're chasing here, but I don't think they're going about it the way that both those teams are, right? We talk about FaZe and Thieves, at least as they stand right now. They are teams with deep coaching staff. They're teams with a lot of player and team trust. You don't hear about them kicking out coaches and players not trusting each other and all the stuff that's getting spoken about Optic. There's just a lot of harmony in those camps. I think those 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 players are very disciplined. They do a lot of VOD review. Um, they're all very talented. And I think there's a lot of other team building stuff they do sort of on the side. And I'd love to speak on those players. And maybe they want to dive in on it. I think for Optic right now, they're at a crossroads at a team because they need to decide which path do they want to go on? Do they want to go on this phase in Thieves path? Because to do that, they're going to either need to bring Rambo back or get a full coaching staff. Because I think to an extent where the team is at the moment is they're almost chasing this like social media highlight version of Call of Duty where we're trying to get these flashiest plays. They do great on YouTube. They do great on Twitter. They do great on Reddit. They don't make for the most consistent gameplay in Call of Duty. They don't make for consistent wins. It's a game that really punishes you uh, if you screw up one life. And I think in particular to this, uh, Krim6, uh, AKE Ian Porter, if you don't know who Krim is somehow, most winningest player of all time, go used to team with a lot of the guys on Optic, both on Optic Texas and on uh, Optic Gaming, rather, in Dallas Empire over the years. And he kind of said on an episode of The Flank that we recorded two days ago, he said that he feels like, in specific to one player on the team, that he feels like Shotzi's almost kind of chasing that a little bit too much now. He's trying to be too flashy in that uh, the MW 2019 version of Avant, aka Shotzi, wouldn't have done that. Where I feel like this move, unfortunately for Optic, is going is going down the other path, which is they're not going to deviate from this this sort of play style, this sort of what they want to build, and it's risky because it can work, right? You can make this pickup, and your team is nasty. You're playing this Yoga Benita style Call of Duty, and you win. You win occasionally, or you win a lot, and it justifies the ends. But what we've seen more likely over the long history of Call of Duty when teams do this is you end up getting into this cycle of roster changes. And I think that's unfortunately where Optic is going because as much as yet Illy's slaying wasn't that good uh, compared to the rest of his team, they still have other obvious issues. Shotzi's got things he's got to work on. I wouldn't say by any stretch of the imagination that Shotzi's played A plus level COD this year. Like I think he's got to get rid of some of the flash, work on playing a little bit more disciplined. He's such a talented one-on-one, -on -one. like his gun skill is incredible, but he's making some bonehead plays. I still don't think that Hook is like the best long-term fit for this team because he's another person that makes a lot of mental mistakes. I think getting rid of Illy now, they have a huge in-game leader void problem in terms of communication. And yeah, it's not to say that the rest of the players are mute, but if they're getting smoked, someone else is going to need to be doing the small talk. And a lot of collections of these players over the years have struggled in those situations. So there's some problems there. And I think my final thing is the unfortunate product of Rambo not being involved in the team is I like JP. He's a nice guy. He's the only coach they have on the squad right now. Compared to every other team in the league, every other top team in the league right now, there's at least one, two, three bodies to help support the functions of the team. And right now this team doesn't have it. I'm worried that either, you know, JP is going to burn out or they're really lacking another person to fill in some of the roles that a coaching staff needs to do in order to make sure the players or overperforming or going into the right mindset prior to a match or really coming in after a bad map and resetting. I just feel like they're lacking all of that. And this one change that Optic's making now, well, if they don't do well at Major 3, they might make another change and another change. And suddenly, you know, this is sort of Cold War uh, Thieves or, I mean, we can go way back. This is sort of like Ghost, uh, uh, Call of Duty Ghosts Optic Gaming, you know, post all of the UMG Philly drama where they, yeah, like end up finding a team that one, but they had like two really good events as a squad. The rest were kind of eh. And then they really didn't start winning, winning, like becoming a dynasty team until they picked up players that actually brought in some real structure and accountability in the team. So anyway, those are my thoughts on Optic. Let's see who they end up actually uh, picking up. Um, but I think to what Crone said earlier on this video when we reviewed his tweet, I don't know if the fans are going to be super happy with this one, at least at the moment. That was an interesting video, guys. I don't normally like rant in these videos, but uh, I feel like with this one, I kind of see sort of these divergent paths and they've got a big sort of decision about how they want to make to kind of chase a W. And I don't know if I necessarily agree with that path. So I may get some hate for it. it is what it is. That's my personal opinion, but hope you guys enjoyed it. Like if you enjoyed the video, comment, obviously if you had some thoughts, I'm sure some of you will. And subscribe for more. We're going to keep doing some more 
roster media stuff this week. I think Shotzi said on stream last night they're going to start scrimming in on Friday. So I think we can talk about their confirmed team at some point this weekend. Probably do a Q&A video at some point this weekend as well. And then next week, we'll start getting into sort of the major three preview stuff. For what it's worth, by the way, Optics got a really hard major three schedule. So we'll talk about that um, later on as they sort of get ready for their home major. So hope you guys enjoy the video and we'll see you guys on the next one.